Well, hello. Happy Sunday to you. Now, I have been threatening you with this for some time. And finally, today is the day. Excuse the boo. <laughs> um, the heirloom quilt from Old Pyjamas. One, two. Fortunately, they semi-match. And then... Sorry, I'm just one, two, had to be blue, didn't it? It was always going to be blue. Three shirts. Now, these are not Hubby's shirts because he wasn't willing to give up any of his at this time. Um, they are charity shop shirts, but they are his pyjamas, so heirloom because they're his pyjamas also heirloom because we've got into this habit in modern day quilting of buying beautiful fabrics and putting them on the machine making a very neat line and then I can't even pick it up now and then opening it out and pressing it flat so we've got these beautiful neat seams and they create stars or log cabin designs or whatever whereas way back when in the day traditionally quilts were made of used clothing that was no good anymore old bed sheets whatever 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 um and yes yeah, some of them never matched at all some of them did sort of match in and of course they were all hand quilted and the i suppose before i go any further i should say buckle up get yourself a cup of tea because this is going to be a long video this is not going to be a 10 minute one <laughs> so having said that um and yeah they were all hand quilted um and we you know we balk at that idea today and yet we've become more than happy to sit and slow stitch squares just using odd scraps of fabric so i had the idea that i was gonna set to um i have ripped deliberately ripped rather than cut these shirts into various sizes of basically rectangles okay there's big ones there's small ones and this particular shirt that came from next had a beautiful in inside back you know on the collar shoulder area so we we got a crafty fault fabric there it also uh this shirt had this lovely label so i might think about using that as well so we've ripped everything into squares and rectangles I have got a piece of wadding here um, this is obviously going to be nowhere near big enough this is roughly 20 by 22 inches just because I thought it was a nice size to handle on my lap so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make several of these and then I'm going to join them together so in a roundabout way, I'm going to be double quilting this quilt because by adding these pieces directly onto here and slow stitching them, which is what I'm going to do. So, for example, that one is going to go on that corner just there and I'm going to slow stitch all the way around the outside that's all then I'm going to find my next rectangle and I will be obviously pulling all the strings off as I go and I'm going to overlap it like you would on a slow stitch square and then I'm going to stitch all the way around there so I'm going to be quilting it as it go as I go but then when I need to join two together I will be having, I'll use this because I've got it here, I'll be having an overflap 
connection point okay and then this one obviously would be a different fabric but that one would sit say there and then we're going to cover up that join so then when um, i've joined them all together and i put my backing fabric on that is when i am going to have to obviously sew the backing fabric to it and i will then obviously um, it'll end up being double quilted now i won't be quilting the backing fabric onto it um, with grey pattern I'll probably just do straight lines we'll see when we get there but we're about to start so I'm not going to worry about pinning anything down or joining anything together I've just got all my piles of fabric here okay I think you can see them can't you no you can't see the fabrics at all so okay let's bring them down a bit so then maybe you can see them can you see them now sort of on the very top but the important thing is you can see the one that i'm going to be stitching and i have chosen because it's going to be blue and red and like this is blue and red which is what allowed me because obviously the blue goes with that and it allowed me to bring in the red in my opinion I've decided that I'm going to be stitching it in this, well, it's not red really, is it? Um, but it's a sheepies and it's 391. And I think it's going to sit nice on the blue. It's going to sit okay on that blue. And it will semi-vanish, but it will sit okay on that red. So that's the colour I'm going for. So I'm going to pull myself off. A length give it a snip and let's start stitching now I am sure that you are not gonna want to necessarily sit and watch the whole thing because you know stitching rectangles is stitching rectangles and once you've done it you've done it but you might want to see a few and see how I'm plodding along so making sure it's nicely on my edge and I'm just going to literally come in about, what's that, half an inch, something like that. And remember I'm no expert stitcher here so I'm just going to try and weave backwards and forwards to about the same length think it's the best way to do it and then pull through when I've got a few on the on the needle oh so pulling it through so this is obviously our infill for Roxy's Journal of Stittering I know a number of people especially Corinne um, I've decided to do the project on you know three or four forms um, I I don't want to do it four times over although each one would be completely different I would rather have you know a separate project running in between I might have to find a smaller needle I'm really struggling to get that needle through and then obviously just straighten it up because we are screwing it up as we're stitching and I know that because I've torn this and I haven't cut it with pinking shears and I'm not uh, you know sewing it on the machine and pressing it back that I'm gonna have frayed edges I know that um, but that's part of what I want I want this very scrappy um, I don't want a almost primitive look about it um, I know the fabrics are not primitive really because they're florally but that's what I'm aiming for and that's why I want to overlay my patches and you know using these coordinating but different 
fabrics and of course we are reuse and recycle one because these shirts had finished their life as a shirt the person that originally purchased them um, and yes they had donated them to a charity shop obviously presuming that somebody would buy them as a shirt and wear them they didn't plan on me coming along going oh no um, I'm going to make a quilt out of them so as I say just going nice and slow and trying to get even stitches in a contrasting thread I'm not going to be changing threads though I'm only going to use this one and um, if I need to um, just want to make sure that's laying semi flat if I need to um, obviously I'll get some more of this I just want to do it all in the red and blue that is my plan so how are you all how have you got on have you done your Roxy's journal of stitchery is your monogram done are you waiting for the next prompt like I am or are you still working on it I've seen loads of pictures of some really really awesome um, monograms turn the corner there and come back to myself now you all know me I'm no perfect stitcher this will be by no means perfect but that's absolutely oh that thread seems to be um, dismantling that's not good is it look why has that happened can you see that happy about that that's for sure don't tell me we've struck disaster at the first post we have that fabric uh, not fabric thread is um, you see that it's winding back on itself that's weird let's see if we solved it now because it was the end and obviously turning it round again just because it makes my life a little bit easier and I'm just as I say feeding in and out um, so yeah how are you all you all happy safe and well I sometimes wonder you know I'm sitting here and chatting to myself I wonder what the neighbours think especially at the moment with all the windows open I presume they just think there's someone in here <laughs> rather than me being on my own chatting away as if I'm waiting for somebody to answer me now as I say I'm no perfect stitcher this will be by no means perfect but that's fine by me um, it's handmade it's recycled and um, hopefully it's going to be loved those lovely little red stitches on the back there for a long time to come stretch it out to make sure you've not you know gathered it all and then i'm going to finish it off just by going through the batting under that stitch and through the loop obviously got an extra thread there there we go And again just to make sure and then I'm just gonna slip it off okay so there is the first piece of this scrappy slow stitch quilt that we are doing I'm gonna take oh shall we take this one next what I want to make sure of is <clears throat> I want to make sure that when I put pieces together 
they're very different sizes now that's not straight so I'm going to let that overhang and then I can obviously trim that when I am finishing up as it were so now I'm going oh we've come over quite a long way haven't we we come over that far, just about there. So go through again with my knot, and then I mean you could put a pin if you wanted to to hold it where you want it. So I'm just gonna. And obviously with a fabric like this it does make it a bit easier for you to have a nice straight line because you can follow the pattern which is um, never a bad thing is it I bet I still can't get a straight line but there you go oh, I really need to find a smaller needle um, Because this is really struggling to get through. I'm going to have super sore fingers if I don't. Yeah. Um. Hang on. Let's see if we can find a smaller back needle. Yeah, see I've got all my needles out in various places. Which is obviously why I opted for this one. So, this is the one. That we're going to use now that I don't know if you can see that that's where that thread's gone weird hmm I'm going to do that stitch again I think because we don't want it all falling apart on us do we I'm sure you can hear Bo snoring next to me. Actually, I know why she's not next to me. I thought she was on the sofa. She's actually halfway down the room, which is um, quite scary, isn't it? But I will have to find one of my smaller ended needles to continue this I'll manage for the video today I could mean manage like I'm you know working under bad conditions <laughs> conditions I set myself aren't they I mean how ridiculous Right, and obviously I'm stretching it out because I don't want it gathered, I want it stitched. I thought you know this could be an ideal project for absolutely anyone you don't have to be a stitcher do you I mean you're or a quilt maker in fact if you're a quilt maker it's probably the worst thing for you because you're going to be fighting I would have thought against the tradition of it being very sort of square and neat and so on I mean I have made quilts like that I've actually got one behind me um, oh look that's very skew with isn't it oh Claire um, that I'm about to finish I went to the shop of Denise the other day <laughs> you all know my friend Denise who's got basically a shop in her house and um, purchased from her backing fabrics and batting or wadding whatever you want to call it in order to 
get it finished. That stitch is a bit too long for my liking. Um, and it's really weird because I, I found it when I was sorting out the shelf. I haven't seen it for years because I'd only done the top. Oh, see, we've, look at that. What is that about, Claire? No, I'm sorry, I'm not having that. That's ridiculous. Right, we'll start that again. <laughs> um, that I'd done years ago, I've never finished. And um, it's only the top, obviously, it needed finishing. And you know, in my mind's eye, that quilt was grey. Mode of fabrics, varying greys. And yet, when I took it, crooked but anyway when I took it to Denise to pick out fabrics we realised it's not grey at all it's actually brown and beige which is really bizarre always thought of it as being oh pull me needle out and this thread It's puckering again. Do you know what? I might be actually having to have a word with the wall mouse because I've never had an issue like that with this fabric, uh, this thread before. Now, okay, I've not been using it for years, but that's very weird how that's starting to unravel. Sorry, I just need to get it through the back. Excuse me, my head on the camera. Right, I'm going to put that through the back and tie it off and pull a, a new piece and see if that's just a random one piece. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do, in case um, there are some of you who want to see but want to get off rather than watch the whole thing, like the whole video, I'm going to just finish this like square so you can see my plan and then um, you can... Trot off if you have to without feeling that you've missed something. Does that make sense? That lines that up near. Oh. Nearly, so I'm just going to pull that through there, like that, get rid of that white thread. And put that through the back. Okay. So that's our first two squares. Now obviously there's going to be a lot of squares, but I figure this will keep me going for a good few months and that makes me, you know, happy. One of the things that I've found with the slow stitching is that I love it. I love doing it. Um, it keeps me busy, especially of an evening when hubby's watching random TV um, but I've been doing lots of little things um, and I don't quite know what to do with them you know you've got little books or whatever I'm just gonna trim that a bit shorter 
to do it properly with a rotary wheel when I'm finishing up. But I'll just trim that off for now. Okay, so we've now got these two pieces. Here's our needle, don't lose our needle. So let's have one of the check pieces now. Um, I think that, yeah, see I don't want them the same length. I think, you know, it's like when you do collaging with paper, you want them different. I'm just going to put a little pin in there to hold it still. Okay. So, we'll go again. Oh, helps you put a knot on it, Claire. So we'll run down this double line here. Just make life a little bit easier. Oh, look at that, we've gone basically away. But now we've got a... Oh no, that wasn't too bad at all. That has gone through there very nicely. Very nicely indeed. Okay. Sorry, I know I keep flicking it around. Probably drives you insane. That's the way that I stitch. I've said this to you before. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing any fancy stitching on it like you normally would with slow stitch. You know, people put sort of fern stitch or blanket stitch or something like that on there. Almost as a stitch sample or whatever. Um, I do too, but I'm not going to be doing that here for two reasons. One, um, I'm going to put this on my bed when it's finished and if I put fancy embroidery stitches on it I can guarantee you that in five minutes Boo's going to catch her claw in one of them and pull all the stitching out and or hurt her foot. So no fancy stitching, just this sort of, I don't know this um I can't even think like straight stitch or borrow stitch whatever you want to call it well I think borrow is when you have multiple lines isn't it and I'm only having the one line so and look I'm screwing it all up I'm not thinking about it I'm not making it precious I'm just enjoying stitching that's the idea And this is what I'm saying to you about, it's getting semi-quilted by me stitching it onto the wadding. And then when I put the backing fabric on, I'll probably bag it. Anyone who knows anything about quilting is when you make it a little bit like a bag and flick it inside out. Um, rather than just laying it on top and stitching through and then putting a bow ending on it so oh we'll see so yeah there'll be no fancy stitching or laces or buttons or anything like that going on because it's going to be functional things like that are awesome to look at in books wall hangings whatever but they're not very functional are they let's be honest and I'm seeing it stitching away and I'm thinking can you actually see what I'm doing or am I off camera 
feel like I should stand up and double check. Right, that's that square. You see, it actually goes quite quickly, really. It would probably go even quicker if I wasn't talking. So I'm going to put one more square and then I'm going to do an over patch. And then those of you that are not wanting to, you know, spend the day here, as it were. <laughs> um, should we have one of these? This white one. Oops. That's a really big one, isn't it? But you see, that'll sit on there. Really big. Really, really, really big. So, put a pin in there. I mean, when I'm doing it off camera and I've got it on my lap in front of the TV, I definitely won't be pinning it. I will only be stitching. So, I'm going to start right in this corner here. Yeah, this is obviously a very big headed needle because that's not has just come straight through. That's better. Okay, so because I just find those pins get in the way um, oh we've gone a bit downhill now haven't we oh well So, great big patchwork squares. I love it. Just so my style. And I mean, yeah, it would be awesome. If I didn't have the dog, would I put decorations on it? I might do. Um, because obviously hubby and I are as <laughs> rough on the bedding as the doggies um, I still think it would be a bad idea because obviously if it's on the bed you're going to want to launder it and that's going to be a real strain on you know decorative stuff that you put on there um, but then having said that they used to um, embroider tablecloths and things and they were always laundered weren't they so I don't know maybe um, It's not such a bad idea, but I, I'm not going to, and I wouldn't, even if I didn't have Boo. I don't think I'll do it anyway. Um, I just think, you know, it's sort of asking for trouble. A bit like when you give a child ice cream in its best Sunday dress. You're only asking for trouble because you know that ice cream is going to end up on that frock. I must admit, my children never had Sunday best in as much as 
I wanted them to enjoy whatever they were doing so things got filthy they got washed that's what soap and water's for if I couldn't get the stain out then I couldn't get the stain out but you know so be it Oh, right, I've done all that and it's got no thread in. I bet you were shouting at the screen, weren't you? Claire, you've lost your thread. Now, obviously, the only thing doing it this way compared to the modern is I am getting all sorts of bits and pieces on here because, as you know, I'm not the tidiest person and there's all bits of... fabric strings and stuff on my I'm trying to refine the original holes here um, on my desk not to mention bits of bow um, floating around but it is what it is okay Corner. Oh look, this one is fighting to get involved, isn't it? You're feeling left out, are you? <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking I hope you can see because I would hate to have done all this and realised none of it's on camera. And then I'm thinking, do you know what? That means I could just stitch all over again. I could do another four or five squares or whatever. So actually, does it matter? Apart from that, I keep pulling my needle out. Right. <clears throat> oh, and I think I told you I was doing the... Um Big little stitchery swap, I think that's what it's called. Um, I had great fun doing that. I ended up with seven partners. I've sent all mine off and I've spoken to all my swap partners. Um, most of them have been received. There are two that have gone AWOL at the moment, but I'm hoping that over the next couple of days they will appear um, and it shouldn't be too long now before I start getting some coming back I always think swaps are brilliant it's like Christmas you're opening up a parcel you don't quite know what's in it you've got a rough idea but you don't quite know what's in it I just think it's awesome right so no I've done it again oh well right so we're gonna have one of these flowers because it is fine to get involved isn't it and you see i'm going to put that one right over all of them like that as a patch but i'm going to go more that way because when i do my join I've got to have one there yeah and then I'll be having one like there or whatever so I'm gonna put this one over there so another bit of thread and off we go again and obviously twisting and turning these fabrics is gonna make them look different I mean, I could put it that way, so that it's long and thin. Something like that. Very straight, is it? Try not to cut myself. Look, oh, cut myself on them yesterday. They really are razor sharp. They're awesome. Until you uh, plop it on your finger. So yeah, we can go upwards. 
or we can go along. I think I'm going along. So let's get this needle threaded. Let's get that one on. And then I'm just going to keep going. I suppose I better check that camera and I can see if you actually can see or if I need to stop. Start all over again. Let's have a little look. Oh no, you can see. Okay. So in this one. So yeah, if you want to um, join in, just get yourself some recycle or fabrics that you can recycle, old clothes, old sheets. Um, if you are a vibrant person and you like the mishmash look, then you could gather absolutely anything. If like me, you like to feel there's a little bit of cohesion, then obviously you can um, look for things that at least are from the same colourway. Maybe don't worry about the pattern, just go for the same colourway. Or don't worry about the colour, go for all flowers or all checks or whatever and just what is it I keep saying to you stitch with the glee of pure abandonment like this one I can see now look has gone skew with absolutely fine by me I don't mind that that's not on the square in fact again it suits the idea of what I'm doing. And because I've got all the fabrics on the table in front of me, let's bring them more forward so you can see. Um, I'm just going to be picking up a piece and adding it if that means that I get the same piece next door to each other periodically, so be it. That matters not a dot to me. Um, I'm not going to be going one, two, three, four to try and make sure that I keep them all separate. Um, that's not. That was obviously just one weird bit of thread because the two cents have been fine. That was very weird. There was obviously a dodgy little area in the ball. Happens, I suppose, doesn't it? It's a bit like when you make a cake and you get a bit that's got no fruit in it, no raisins in it or whatever. It happens. So, hubby's off out again, so that's just me and Boo. So, well, not obviously, but as always, I'm filming ahead, so it's a work day, and he's off at a business meeting. Boo's snoring. Done the ironing. Done, tidied around the bedroom. Uh, watched a Tracy Fox video and now I'm here with you lovely people and I've uploaded um, the monthly journal so yeah it's all happening so there you go that is my plan and I'm just going to be doing more of the same all across um how many of these 20 by 20 odd waddings am i going to need no idea <laughs> um 
I'm just going to keep going until it feels big enough. Um, I'm not looking for this to be a... Can't have that. See, now I don't want that piece. Now this is where I'm going to be fussy. <laughs> not about much. Because it ends there. And we've already got one ending there. Um, so I don't want that. I'm happy with the fabric. But I want a different shape. So maybe we'll go for that one. Um, sorry, I totally forgot what I was saying. Oh, how many of these will I need? I've got no idea. I mean, I've got a king size bed, but I'm not looking for it to be like one of these. Um, quilt covers that you put the duvet actually inside that hopefully hangs over and you know down the side a little bit um, I just want it to be more like the very old fashioned eider down that sort of sat on the top I've got the thread right around my bracelet um, that sort of sat on the top in the middle if you know what I mean um, I've got no idea what measurement that is I will have to um, get a tape measure. Oh, get a tape measure up there and work out what it is that um, I need size-wise. I'm guessing that I probably want six of these. That is a guess. I may be totally wrong. I may need eight or whatever, but I'm guessing at six at the moment. Um, we'll see how we go. Also, it would be nice to sort of go with the flow and stop when I run out of fabric. <laughs> Don't particularly want fabrics left over. I mean, it's great to stick them in the scraps box, obviously, and we can do something with them. But I feel like I would rather um, just... Use what I've got, call it a day, move on to something else, you know what I mean? So, what are you all up to in your slow stitching? Are you only doing Roxy's creation. Are you not doing Roxy's creation at all? I mean, that's very possible. Um, are you happy doing the one project a fortnight? Are you working faster and having other things going on as well? Or are you just filling in like I am. Are you like Karina? You're doing three or four different projects on it. Um, I say Corinne like she's my best mate and you all know her. <laughs> From um, Treasures, Corinne's loved Treasures, Treasure Loves. I'm sure you all know who I mean. Very bad with names. It's not meant um, in a derogatory manner at all. They're just rubbish at names. Right. See, and I feel like um, I could have this finished tonight. So that would be one of my suspected six already done here we go better slow down that's not gonna last forever is it okay um i think we're gonna have one of these flowers now and i want one that's got a flower on like this one it's got a proper a proper big proper big flower on it like that That's where I'm planning to go with this. 
about there like that so as you can see very random no no plan per se I could even get brave, I suppose, when it's done. Could even get brave and, um, oh, it's totally crooked, Claire. Do you want to pull all that back out and start again, love? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you, woman? Um, I could get brave and get my friction pen on it and um, hang quill in maybe a blue. Oh, what a thought. I could. Don't know if I will. Um, because it's going to be very big on my lap, isn't it? That's the thing. Um, I suppose, I mean, I did see someone recently and they were embroidering, not quilting, but they were embroidering something absolutely massive and they were doing it in a hoop. So I suppose that's one way of doing it, isn't it? So we'll put it in a hoop. <clears throat> um, oh, it's a bit crooked again, never mind. Um, put it in a hoop and go that way. I don't know. I think this is going to be um, something that evolves. Um, all I thought about so far in earnest is using the scrap fabrics in a slow stitch primitive manner rather than a machine quilt that's all i've thought about um, and we'll go from there really um, and when i get to that end stage i think it's just going to depend on what mood i'm in there you go it's going to be what mood am i in am i wanting to hand quilt this which is you know an option or am I just gonna put it on the sewing machine I don't know we'll see we're gonna let it evolve naturally I think is the answer whoops I'm just sort of pulling it straight and flat. It's cooled down quite a lot. It's very nice. In fact, looking out the window, you could be forgiven. Oh, now look. We can't have that, can we? Because we need this on there. So we need to make sure that we stitch that on there. Otherwise, that's where we're going to have to put our new patch. But again, I can put a patch over that. It's not a major problem. Oh, I'm stitching a hair into it now. One of my hairs. It's interesting, isn't it? Well, definitely the heirlooms the grandchildren with it's got my hair sewn into it won't it <laughs> it lasts that long without afraid right back 
again, you see, if you're doing this with clothes that you no longer wear, it's free, isn't it? Well, it's not free, but it's almost free because all you're paying for is you're threading the wadding. Because although I will probably do the back in one solid piece of thread, there's um, no rule that says um, I have to. I could quite happily, um, see, I think we'll join all three of those together with this bit. It's not quite covering that. Have I got a slightly bigger one? Because obviously I ripped these all independently. They could all be different sizes. Yes, yeah, see, because look, that one's shorter. So do I just go that way then? And do it that way? That way it's definitely long enough, isn't it? That one looks slightly narrow. I'm going to put that one in there. So, we've got a little pin there. We haven't got much thread, but I will start. But no idea. I think I've probably been here an hour. I think you're probably. Oh, you're probably done, aren't you? Yep, yeah, we've been here an hour. So, I'm going to stop there, especially as that thread's falling out. You've got the idea. You know exactly what I'm doing. If you'd like to join in, then it would be great to have your craft along with me. Um, grab up your recycled clothing and let's get stitching together. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Stay safe. I'll be back very soon. Bye bye for now.